Coming up on New Center 16 at 5. The signs are up, the lines are painted, and the Performance Center is ready to go. The South Bend Cubs opening day has arrived and their gates are officially open. Life goes on on South Bend's Cayley Street, where a home that's destined to be demolished is still occupied. He's living there illegal. A squatter. Yes, I call him a squatter. He is a squatter. Plus, even with the facility improvements and doctor hirings, veterans continue to experience long waits. And many of the VA clinics with long delays are in areas with large military populations, including right here in South Bend. And we've had showers and thunderstorms already today, but are more on the way? I'll show you the radar coming up next. From WNDU, your breaking news and weather authority, this is New Center 16 at 5. Good evening, I'm Maureen McFadden. Terry has the night off. Michiana is on alert tonight as areas west of us are under a tornado watch. Let's send it straight over to Chief Meteorologist Mike Hoffman, who's watching this system closely. Mike? Well, that's right, Maureen. This is the first time we've had to really deal with this so far this year, and it might not happen. We might get lucky in this situation, but it's something we have to watch. You can see right now on 16 Doppler Max, the areas of showers and thunder, showers across the area. Uh, some other areas are getting sunshine, like right here in South Bend. We're having a peak of sunshine at the moment. But off to the west is the main line of thunderstorms. The large orange area, severe, or, uh, those are tornado watches across the region, and you'll notice the little red box there in Iowa. That's a tornado warning in that area. So that line of thunderstorms has just developed. That will begin to move eastward and that will uh, perhaps give us severe weather later on this evening. If you're planning on going to the uh, Cubs game tonight though, we could get lucky right through this uh, right through this area here. It, that could be game time and that could all be dry. So uh, that's something we'll be watching as we head through the rest of the evening. My hour by hour forecast then shows a good chance of showers still at six o'clock. Now a lot of the time seven, eight, and nine will probably be dry with just a shower in some spots as that line of thunderstorms is still to the west of us at least through nine o'clock. So we're kind of thinking 10 or 11 before that main line would get here and hopefully I'm not sure, but hopefully it will be weakening by then. But uh, we have to watch it just in case. So we'll be on top of it and have the latest forecast coming up. Thank you, Mike. Of course, the weather is top on the minds for thousands of fans that are filing into Four Winds Field tonight. It's opening day for the South Bend Cubs, and the celebration is already underway. New Center 16's Megan Hickey joins us live from the Cubby Blue Ballpark, where the gates opened just moments ago. So, Megan, how's the weather holding up right now? Maureen, it's actually beautiful right now. It did downpour earlier in the afternoon and it rained just a few moments ago, but the gates are officially open. Fans are just starting to come in and these seats you see next to me, they're actually all sold. So this is going to be a very busy night tonight and hopefully the weather helps us out. Again, this is a night six months in the making since the team announced its new Cubs affiliation back in September. Fixed seating has been sold out for weeks and the first 5,000 fans into the stadium are getting commemorative prizes marking the big opening day. They'll also be serenaded by a pregame concert before the first pitch at 7.05. Of course, last night's thunderstorms and the spotty showers today have been a huge concern for players and fans. We've heard some the, some talk about some potential severe weather. Um, that's going to be something we're going to be monitoring. You know, obviously, the safety of our fans is the number one priority for us. So we'll be making announcements throughout the game if there's anything that looks like it's coming in. Give fans the opportunity to leave well in advance if they want to leave the ballpark. If they do want to stay and we do get some severe weather, we have the concourse, we got the performance center, we got the uh, team store. We have areas that we can we can put folks. And yes, this is the first season with that new natural grass. And as Joe Hart was explaining, there are about seven inches of sand underneath the grass, which is designed to absorb that rainwater. So theoretically, if it rains, they should be able to get back on the grass in 20 or 25 minutes. Let's just hope that this weather holds up. All right. And Megan, today also marks the opening of the new performance center and batting cages at Four Winds Field. Right, so they were just putting those last finishing touches on the Performance Center yesterday. It is gorgeous. I've been inside. It's going to be a really great facility. Those batting cages will be open during the games, only during the games right now, but they're hoping to add more hours as the season progresses. And this is a pretty cool start to the 2015 season. Yeah, let's hope the rain holds out. Thanks a lot, Megan. And speaking of the new Performance Center, it was in full use this afternoon by the team itself preparing for tonight's game. Our team coverage continues with News Center 16's Angelo DiCarlo live inside the Performance Center. Anj? 
Thanks a lot, Mo. We are joined live now by the manager of the South Bend Cubs, Jimmy Gonzalez. Jimmy, first of all, welcome to South Bend. Thank you. Uh, hopefully the weather cooperates tonight, but we're inside here at the Performance Center. How awesome is this facility for you guys? I know you guys were already warming up in here earlier today. Yeah, we get first hand to use it on our first opening night, and uh, it's just amazing to have six cages available to you. These nets pull back, and we just have, I mean, anything that we could do on the field, we could do here. Some of the guys were talking about how it feels like uh, they're in the big leagues already with the facilities you guys have for, for a single 18. Yeah, this is amazing what we have. You know, Mr. Berlin, he, he went and did a great job with this, and, and it's just uh, to be able to have this facility and do the things that we're able to do it's just I mean it's, it's amazing how excited are you guys for tonight because for the players this is gonna feel like a big time opening day because of the fact that how many people are here and all the festivities that are going on everyone's excited you know the players the the staff the fans everyone is just because of the new the upgrades that they've made the new facility and and just to have all this available to them, and this is a ball, you know, and it's it's a big league facility for sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself as Michiana starts learning about you. I know you were 14 years in the minor, so you know a thing or two about what it takes to to move up in the ranks here in the minor league. Yeah, it's a definite, it's a it's a grind, you know. Um, luckily, they have these facilities, which kind of makes it a little bit more comfortable for them, but. Um, it's a grind regardless, no matter what level you're playing at in the minor leagues, and, and they have to know that. You know, Sometimes they can get a little bit comfortable because they have these facilities, but they have to realize that they're not trying to stay here, they're trying to get out of here. And I imagine you're pretty pumped to be the South Bend Cubs manager as well. I sure am, I'm very excited. You know, uh, Mr. Berlin, Joe, the front office, they've all done a great job. They've treated us, I mean, like we've been here for years, and, and that, that, that going in and having that comfort and that feeling is great. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much for joining us. Best of luck tonight. Thank you very much. All right, that is Jimmy Gonzalez, the manager of the South Bend Cubs. First pitch, we hope, is 7.05, <laughs> weather permitting. Things looking better now. So hopefully it's all going to work out for the big game tonight, Mo. Right on, Jim. Plenty of special guests will be on hand tonight as well. Yeah, Wayne Mesmer, who is the longtime PA announcer for the Cubs, has sung so many national anthems, will be on hand to sing the Star Spangled Banner. And Cubs president Theo Epstein will be here as well. He'll be throwing out the first pitch. So lots of great festivities on a big night here at Four Winds Field. All right, Angela DiCarlo live from Four Winds Field. Thank you. Well, three weeks ago, authorities who responded to a medical call stumbled upon deplorable conditions inside a home on Cayley Street. Today, the city ordered that the house be demolished and the homeowners agreed. Mark Peterson joins us live in the studio. So, Mark, something's still standing in the way. Well, three weeks after that uh, initial discovery, another revelation, someone is still living inside that home. Uh, from the statements made today, looks like three people still inside, although at least two others have apparently moved out. It was back on March 19th. The Code enforcement inspection revealed uh, portions of the floor were sagging or had collapsed. There was a foul odor. Uh, animal feces was scattered about the rooms, and it was pretty apparent humans had been using the bathtub as their toilet. Since then, the situation has only become worse. Add to that, the utilities have now been shut off. The gas, the electric, the water, and the last three tenants are refusing to leave, much to the dismay of the homeowners. He's living there illegally. A squatter, you call Yes, him. I call him a squatter. He is a squatter. What have you done to try to get him out? Shut the utilities off. We shut everything off. Not that. everything. The utilities are off. From ordinary people, that's enough. Somebody's still living there. That's what they said today in the hearing. So to my knowledge, yes, somebody's living there without any utilities at all. Is that legal or possible? It is illegal, uh, and it is possible. We have a vacate seal on the property which means we're telling them they have to move out. Unfortunately, we cannot make them move out. The owner's responsible for doing eviction to get him out of the home. And the homeowners were told to immediately act to start that eviction process or they could face fines of up to $2,500 a day. Okay, were you able to talk with the people who are still living in the house? Uh, no, we knocked on the door. Uh, they did not answer, although uh, we did observe somebody pulling back the curtains in the upstairs uh, mm. window peeking out and the neighbors do confirm somebody's been living there the entire time. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, today brought the final public hearing on a controversial bill that would end a 102-year-old Indiana tradition, a bill that would change the fundamental job description of the elected state school superintendent went before the House Committee today. The bill would take away the superintendent's responsibility to serve as chair of the State Board of Education. Some see the move as political, since current superintendent Glenda Ritz is a Democrat, while other members of the board are appointed by Republican Governor Mike Pence, 
who is pushing the measure. Education does represent almost half of the state budget. It doesn't make sense to support a bill that would dismantle a system of checks and balances between elected and appointed members of the State Board of Education. The governor has repeatedly asked that um, we get back to business of investing in our schools in ways that prepare our kids for their future. We think that allowing the board to select its own chair is a, a good step in that direction. The bill passed out of committee by a vote of eight to four. It now moves on to the House floor. Making news this evening, reports show South Bend Veterans Affairs Clinic is among 50 VA hospitals and clinics around the nation with the highest percentage of appointments that took 31 days or longer to complete. An analysis of wait times for appointments was completed between September and February for 940 U.S. outpatient clinics and hospitals. It showed the clinic in South Bend had the nation's 45th highest rate of long waits, and about 7% of its appointments failed to meet the VA goals for seeing patients within the 30-day time frame. Statewide, more than 10,000 medical appointments out of roughly 460,000 were completed during the six-month period at the 18 Indiana VA clinics and hospitals. And much like here in South Bend, reforms to the Veterans Affairs medical system have yet to significantly improve wait times to see doctors at many facilities nationwide. The Associated Press examined government data on the length of time veterans waited for non-emergency health care. Edward Lawrence digs deeper into the findings. Some good news in the data, wait times for VA doctors in the Northeast, Midwest and West states were just as fast as in the private sector. You're watching WNDU, your breaking news and weather authority. News Center 16 at 5. Tracking weather with an hour by hour forecast. Storm Team 16 is your weather authority. And we are now up to 71 degrees in South Bend. Look at Houghton Lake, just 42. And it's already 80 in Lexington, uh, 83 in St. Louis. So there's warm air surging northward right out ahead of a cold front. And you can basically see that cold front in the colors here. And that's where you'll see the heavy line of showers and thunderstorms developing right now with even some severe weather along it. That's what will uh, have to give us our chance for severe weather. And so that's still five, six hours away. We're looking at late this evening before that's uh, probably coming in, unless something forms out ahead of it, which is always possible. But uh, typically, once you get this one main line, that's going to be it with the cold front. And that's what we have to watch. Look at the chilly air, though, to the north and west of us. And we're going to see this chillier air coming in uh, our way tomorrow. So as it becomes windy, it's going to feel a lot different tomorrow as you head outdoors than today. There's our Skyview 16 camera overlooking our uh, WNDU station here and looking at downtown. It's 71 degrees. It's mostly cloudy. We've seen some peaks of sunshine, but that's about it. 75% relative humidity. Winds are south to southwesterly at 14, but again, those will be picking up later tonight and during the day tomorrow. Temperatures right now mid 60s off to the north and east of South Bend, uh, near and above 70 to the southwest of it. That's kind of the warm front coming on through. Now there are still some showers uh, off to the west. Now the orange area is the uh, tornado watch has been out for several hours. That's off to the west of us, and it's not being it's not going to uh, be issued over us for at least a while here until we uh, pick out that line of thunderstorms to the west and decide when it's going to come here. You can see the uh, showers will be moving back into our western areas, though, again. So if you're heading out to the Cubs game tonight, here's what you have to hope for. That's the back edge of this initial batch of rain, and that hopefully that's it. So here's what you hope that the uh, game time conditions are with just a few spotty showers here and there. Now we have to watch these areas. There could be a new line of storms form ahead of the main line right now that's west of uh, Miss the Mississippi River. It's always an evolving process when we head through a situation like this. So here's what the future looks like with 16 Future Track. And Future Track never does show a line of thunderstorms with this system. I think there will be one, but you can see it just shows hit and miss showers and thunderstorms at 9 p.m. Once again, with a little better chance there as we head toward uh, 11, 12, once the front moves through just after midnight, everything sweeps off to the east. It's windy, it's chillier, maybe a little bit of rain shower. Look at that, future track showing snow southwest of Green Bay in Wisconsin. Don't worry, that's not expected to come our way, but we will see some spotty showers here and there later tonight and tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening, we'll see this next system coming through. Probably after 5 or 6 tomorrow, we'll see some showers move through. This shouldn't be heavy, but it'll last uh, toward midnight. So if you have evening plans tomorrow night, 
might need the umbrella with you. A little bit of fog possible first thing Saturday. Otherwise, we're looking for a lot of sunshine as high pressure builds in. So at least the first part of the weekend looking very nice. Second part, we're probably going to stay dry as we expect these showers to hold off until at least Sunday evening. Here's my Storm Team 16 forecast for all of Michiana for tonight. An evening shower, a thunderstorm, the best chance is early and again late this evening. Then cooler with spotty showers after that. Low temperature down to 46. 7-day planning forecast, breakfast time tomorrow. Uh, it looks like uh, temperatures are going to be, um, well, this is the old 7-day, sorry about that. I have the new one, I'm just not sure why it's not showing up. But uh, we are looking at chillier conditions for uh, tomorrow. Saturday's looking beautiful, it'll continue to be a green day. And on through the rest of the 7-day uh, forecast, you can see a better chance for showers and thunderstorms again coming in uh, as we head through the middle and latter parts of next week. But. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I think we're done with the, uh, the really cold air for now, although there are some, well, looking way down the line, maybe in a couple of weeks, we could have one more shot of chilly air, but, okay. you know, you can't get too cold this time. Right, of but a lot of people worried about the South Bend Cubs game tonight. You're thinking they well, might luck we, out? Well, we have a window there. Okay. Uh, if that window doesn't fill in, which it does sometimes, uh, right. then we might get most of the game in, if not all of it, if we're real lucky. We'll yeah. have to get lucky, but... Uh, we could, we could it's happened it. before. It has happened before. <laughs> All right, Mike, thanks a lot. Well, congressional caucuses cover a wide range of issues, including craft beer. Yesterday, we told you about the huge economic impact small craft breweries have on the country. And today, we have more about how Congress is making sure that trend continues. Washington correspondent Lauren Adams has the story. Lawmakers spend a lot of time talking about budgets and bipartisanship. But what about beer? What's happened in recent years is a resurgence of craft uh, brewers, small scale. But those small scale brewers are making a large scale impact. It started off as a really small idea, but it grew into a really big entity. And it just instead of one or two employees, we're talking about thousands of employees, and we're talking about economic growth. Congressman Mike Kelly is a co-chair of the Small Brewers Caucus in the House. Senator Tammy Baldwin is a member of the same caucus in the Senate. Those caucuses exist to make sure the multi-billion dollar craft beer industry can continue to thrive. We're all working together for the same entity, and that's American workers and American jobs and growing the American economy. Many of them are really turning neighborhoods and cities around. One of the biggest pieces of legislation the caucus supports is the Brew Act, which will lower the excise tax on the first two million barrels of beer small brewers sell each year. Being able to keep a lot of that initial revenue in-house so we can hire more people, buy more ingredients, that's, that's important to us. Patrick Mullane and his friend Ben Evans recently opened Hellbender Brewery in Washington, D.C. The two say the support on Capitol Hill is vital for their business. Having, uh, having the support we've had um, you know, from the Brewers Caucus, from uh, local businesses and just uh, people in D.C. in general, it's been, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really lucky. And lawmakers say focusing on craft breweries and clearing the way for expansion makes sense for America. They'll grow it. They'll make it bigger. They'll make it better. They'll make their community stronger, their families stronger, and the country stronger. So it's just a win, win, win all the way around. Helping Americans one ale at a time. Reporting in Washington, I'm Lauren Adams. Coming up, like many would assume, getting a vasectomy is a permanent thing, or is it? Next in today's Medical Moment, we're checking out a new method that's reversing the procedure, and it's as simple as connecting dots. The latest health news for you and your family. This is Maureen's Medical Moment. A new and improved way to reverse vasectomies is giving men another chance to have kids. The story in today's Medical Moment. Each year, 500,000 men will get a vasectomy to eliminate their chances of having children, but about 5% of them will change their minds. Now there's a new procedure to reverse vasectomies and give men another chance at fatherhood. At age 22, Charles Mitchell decided he didn't want to have children, so he had a vasectomy. I figured the right thing to do was uh, man up and get things snipped. But 10 years later, Charles was in his second marriage and had different priorities. I began to yearn for a family more. Like many men, Charles thought his vasectomy wasn't reversible. But Dr. Philip Worthman says that's usually not the case. People need to know this very important thing that, that men can have a second chance after having a vasectomy. To reverse a vasectomy, doctors simply reconnect the tubes from each testicle that were clipped and blocked. 
However, some men develop a second blockage and require a more extensive procedure. The doctors would have to make a big cut and they would have to expose all the scrotal contents. But Dr. Worthman developed a new microsurgical method. Through a very small incision, he bypasses the second blockage without taking any organs out of the body. What that means is the less dissection, the less mucking around, the quicker the recovery, the fewer the complications. If a man has one blockage, Dr. Worthman says his reversal success rate is 98 percent. If there are two blockages, Dr. Worthman's technique is about 65 percent successful. After having the procedure, Charles has big news. I do have big news. Uh, we have twins on the way, so <laughs> yeah, really exciting. Now he'll get a second chance at being a dad. Dr. Worthman says the operation costs anywhere from eight to twelve thousand dollars, which is half as expensive as fertility treatments. Dr. Worthman says his oldest patient was able to reverse a vasectomy after 56 years. The man was in his 80s and was able to have two children after the reversal procedure. And to read the research summary for today's story, you can go to WNVU.com and click on the medical moment.